Rejoice to the extent that you partake of Christ's sufferings, mm -hmm. that when his glory is revealed, you may also be glad with exceeding joy. If you are reproached for the name of Christ, blessed are you, for the spirit of glory and of God rests upon you. On their part, he is blasphemed, but on your part, he is glorified. But let none of you suffer as a murderer, a thief, an evildoer, or as a busybody in other people's matters. Yet, if anyone suffers as a Christian, let him not be ashamed, but let him glorify God in this matter. For the time has come for judgment to begin at the house of God. And if it begins with us first, what will be the end of those who do not obey the gospel of God? Now if the righteous one is scarcely saved, where will the ungodly and the sinner appear together? Therefore, let those who suffer according to the will of God commit their souls to him in doing good as to a faithful creator. Amen. Glory be to the Father, to the Son, and to the Holy Ghost. Amen. 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 You may be seated. Our scripture lesson this afternoon comes from the Old Testament book of Ruth. Ruth chapter 1, where we shall commence our reading with verse 15. And we shall proceed to read to the end of verse 18. Ruth 1, 15 through 18. And she said, Behold, thy sister-in-law is gone back unto her people and unto her gods. Return thou after thy sister-in-law. And Ruth said, Entreat me not to leave thee, or to return from following after thee. For whither thou goest, I will go. And where thou lodgest, I will lodge. Thy people shall be my people, and thy God, my God. Where thou diest, will I die. And there will I be buried. The Lord do so to me, and more also, if aught but death part thee and me. When she saw that she was steadfastly minded to go with her, then she 
left speaking unto her. Beloved, please turn with me to the Gospel of St. John, the 15th chapter, where we shall read from verse 13 through the end of verse 17. That's the Gospel of St. John, chapter 15, verses 13 through 17. Greater love hath no man than this, that a man lay down his life for his friends. Ye are my friends, if ye do whatsoever I command you. Henceforth I call you servants, for the servant knoweth not. Henceforth I call you not servants. For the servant knoweth not what his Lord doeth. But I have called you friends. For all things that I have heard of my Father, I have made known unto you. Ye have not chosen me, but I have chosen you and ordained you that ye should go and bring forth fruit, and that your fruit should remain that whatsoever ye ask of the Father in my name, he may give it you. These things I command you that ye love one another. The word of God for the people of God, glory be. To God. Amen. Amen. Let us pray. Gracious God, precious Lord, sweet Holy Spirit, it is in the name that is above every name, it is in the name at which every knee shall bow and tongue shall confess. It is in that name whereupon Satan has to flee. It is in the mighty, matchless, majestic name of Jesus Christ, my God, that we approach your throne of grace this morning, this afternoon, my God, in Jesus' name. Lord, we pray that you shall forgive us for all of our sins. Oh God, have mercy. Bless us with forgiveness for every sin we committed with intentionality for every sin we've committed by word for every sinful action done with these hands, with these bodies, my Lord, we come praying for mercy because mercy suits us, suits our case. Oh Lord, bless us that we may stop stepping on Toes that need not be stepped on, that we might stop offending people who don't deserve such an offense. Oh, bless us, God, that we might move, that we might grow, my Lord, to do those things, my Lord, that are pleasing in your sight. Oh, bless us, God, to serve you with our minds, with our, with our bodies, with our whole soul, that we shall offer the best of ourselves, that we might offer the best example of holiness and righteousness and how good it is to be a child of God who is obedient to his holy word, who is obedient to his will, who, who follows the way of Jesus Christ and not the way of the world. Oh God, we recognize that there should be a marked distinction. There should be a marked 
difference, my God, in the way your children carry about their business, in the way your children live out their lives in this world. So bless us, my God. Your word declares that the steps of a good man are ordered in your word. So bless us, God, to stay in your word, to stay in your grace, to stay in prayer. Oh, bless us, God, to stay in your way, my Lord, that our steps shall be ordered by your word, that everything that we do, everything that we say, everywhere that we go, we shall allow our light to so shine that men will see our good works and give you the glory in heaven. Oh my God, we want to live lives that are pleasing in your sight. So we thank you, God, in Jesus' name, for your holy word, a lamp unto our feet and a light upon our path. Oh, God, we thank you this day for your holy word that lets us know exactly how we ought to love one another. God, we thank you this day for your holy word. And we, we pray, my Lord, in Jesus' name, that you will send forth a word today, a word that we might understand of word that we can live a word my lord that we can share with somebody my lord because there is somebody standing in need of a word my god there is somebody standing in need of prayer my lord there is somebody who's standing in need of love your word is love so Bless us, God, to share the love that somebody who's still living a life of sin might be blessed with that heavenly grace. Oh, bless us, God, that somebody who feels like they have no place will, will find that they have a place resting in your arms. Oh, bless us, God, in the name of Jesus, that somebody who feels like they have no love will come to know the love of our God will come to know the love of you, O oh Lord, the love of Jesus Christ that will be with them always, even to the end of the world. Lord, we thank you that your word declares that you never leave us or forsake us. And for that, my God, we pray that somebody who's feeling alone, that somebody who's still deep in mourning, that somebody, my God, who has just endured the senseless violence that took away a loved one, that somebody, my God, will come to know that trouble don't last always, that they shall come to know that Jesus cares. So bless us, God, this day, my Lord, this is our prayer as we come to give thee thanks for the good, the bad, the indifferent. God, we come this day with an attitude of gratitude, thanking you, Lord, for the mothers who first told us about you. Thank you, God, for the mothers you sent our way, my God, who, who held us, who, who wiped every tear from our eyes, who, who picked us up when we were down and, and told us that everything was going to be all right. The mothers, my Lord, who told us that as long as we stayed in your everlasting love, we are right where we're supposed to be, and we will be what we're supposed to be, the children of the Most High God. Lord, we thank you for loving mother. God, we thank you for the mothers who are still learning how to love. God, we thank you for the mothers who are here, and Lord, we give you thanks for the mothers who are now our angels. Because we know, my God, that we have angels watching over us. Lord, we thank you this day for every gift, for every blessing, for every act of kindness, for 
every instance of mercy. God, we thank you for your grace. In the mighty name of Jesus Christ, we pray. Amen. 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 And amen. 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 Praise God. Coming from the book of Ruth, the first chapter, we have prepared a sermon to preach, and we call it Faith of Our Mothers. Faith of Our Mothers. Now this, is a story of faith. It is a story of redemption, a story all about a mother's love. The story goes that there was a family from Bethlehem in Judah during a period of famine where the children of God, the children of Israel, were starving to death. The husband, whose name was Elimelech, he took his wife Naomi and his two sons, Malin and Chilion, and they left Judah and went and settled in a pagan country, Moab, where there was food and where they had hoped to find a better quality of life. After some time, Elimelech died, and then the two sons both married Moabite women, Orpah and Ruth. And after about ten years of wedded bliss, but no children, both of the sons also died, and Mother Naomi was left with her two daughters-in-law. When they only received word that the famine was over and that there was food in Bethlehem, she got up, she packed up, and she started heading back up towards home, and her two daughters-in-law were with her. Then she turned to them and told them to go back. And she prayed for them. She prayed that the Lord God would bless them to find husbands who could provide for them with love and comfort. She kissed them goodbye. And they all began to cry. Then Orpah went back. But Ruth, in faith, declared, where you go, I will go. Where you live, I will live. Your people shall be my people. Your God will be my God. Where you die, that's where I'm going to die. And where you're buried, that's where I'm going to be buried. May the Lord punish me and do worse if I allow even death to separate us. When Naomi saw that Ruth meant business, she allowed her to follow her home to Bethlehem. Beloved, I propose to you today that Ruth had the faith of our mother. She knew that God sent her husband and his family to her for such a time as this. And now that her husband was gone, God was sending her to the kingdom of Israel for such a time. It was a yearning, a pulling of the spirit, and she refused to be separated from Mother Naomi because Naomi was the mother who introduced her to Almighty God. And that made her more of a mother than anybody else could be. So, on this Mother's Day, what is a mother? A mother is more 
than just one who brings you into this world. A mother is one who shows you that there is a place in this world where you fit in, where you belong. A mother is one who loves you unconditionally, who lets you know that no matter what, she'll always be your mother. No matter what, you'll always be her child. And no matter what, you will always have a home in her heart. A mother is one who teaches you everything you need to know to make it in this world. Naomi was not Ruth's biological mother, but she was her mother. So Ruth vowed that nothing, not even death, would separate them. Now, before we continue, I think it's important that we take a look at the names of the people in this story. Because there's something peculiar, something very interesting going on with these names. First and foremost, Bethlehem means the city of bread. Now, how in the world is there no bread in the city of bread? Bethlehem was also the city of God. But Elimelech's family, children of God, went to a pagan country and there found in Ruth a woman who demonstrated the grace of God. Oh, God wants us to know today that sometimes you cannot be afraid to move. God is trying to tell somebody that sometimes you cannot be afraid to move on. If there is a famine in the land in which you live, you got to move on and find yourself something to eat. If there is no sunshine in the world in which you live, sometimes you just got to plant, plant up your feet, take up your feet and plant your feet in fertile ground. You got to be willing to go when God is trying to tell you to go. Elimelech, the name Elimelech means God is king. And Naomi, that name, Naomi, it means sweet and pleasant. Mine, the son, the name means sickly. And Chilion, the other son, his name means failing. How in the world two people who are named God is king and sweet and pleasant produce offspring who are sickly and failing. And then Orpha, the one who married sickly, her name means the back of the neck. And that's exactly the last thing Ruth and Naomi saw as she walked away the back of her neck. Now, the name Ruth means bread. When Naomi lost her husband, when Naomi lost both her sons. It appeared that Naomi had nothing left. Everything she had seemed to be gone. Too many times when people lose possessions, when people lose power, even their abilities, they also seem to lose some friends. I know a woman who had a stroke and she lost the ability to use the whole side, one whole side of her body and her face drooped down so badly her husband said he couldn't even stand to look at her no more. So he left her. I know a man who lost his virility and the power and the stamina he had when he was young it 
was all gone. And when it was gone, so was his wife. She was gone and left him for a younger man, a man who was more like the man her husband used to be. When both of these no good, dirty rascals were gone, the woman with the stroke made a full recovery and looks better and younger now than she ever did before. When the brother with the lost virility found himself a new life and he found himself a new wife and he had three more children and now his wife is just as happy and satisfied as she wanted to be. Sometimes in order to gain new life, uh, you got to be willing to lose the old one. Sometimes uh, in order to gain new love, you got to be willing to cut ties with the old one. Sometimes uh, to walk in newness of life, uh, you got to be willing to say bye-bye. You got to be willing to say uh, so long. You got to be willing to move on and go where God is leaving, where God is leaving you. When they owe me lost everything, that's when she found a friend in Ruth. There's somebody who can testify. When I lost everything, that is when I found a friend in Jesus. When I felt like dying, that is when I found that the Lord was my Savior. When I felt like I lost my way, that is when the Lord God picked me up. That is when the Lord says, there is a place for you. There is a place for you right here in my heart. You fit in because I'm right here with you. You fit in because I'll be with you all the way. You fit in because you are my child in whom I am well pleased. When they owe me lost everything, Ruth said, but I'm right here with you. Ain't that just like the grace of God? Our Lord is one who will stick closer than a brother. Our Lord is one who will be closer to you than any friend. He says, I'll never leave you. I'll never forsake you. I'll be with you always, even to the end of the world. This is the very same vow that Ruth made to Naomi. And Mother Naomi, she agreed to let Ruth follow her. But there is one thing that we cannot miss in following Ruth, excuse me, in following Naomi, Ruth is following God. Just like Paul said, follow me as I follow Christ. And always remember me and always remember everything that I have taught you about the Lord. Isn't that the way our mothers always speak to us? Don't you be out in the street acting like you ain't got no home training. Don't you be out in the street acting like you are not a child of God. Don't just do what I say. I need you to also do what I do. Our mother said, follow me as I follow Jesus. Follow me and I'll show you how to live. Follow me, and I'll show you how to love. Follow me, and I'll show you how to be loved. Amen. Ruth decided that she wanted to follow the God of Israel. But being a Moabitess, being from Moab, her only connection, the only connection she had to the God of Israel was Naomi. Oh, you need to know that the Moabites, the children of Moab, they were considered a nasty, dirty, immoral people. They were considered 
city, no good, dirty jokers who would do anything to satisfy their desires. But my God says, what for whom I have cleansed, don't you call common of whom I have washed in my blood, they are now clean. Don't you call dirty my children. See, you got to understand, they, it, it was believed that they would do anything to get what they wanted. There's nothing wrong with somebody being willing to go to any limit as long as their desire is healthy. If it's your desire to follow Jesus, then you ain't going to let nothing stand in your way. You will leave anything behind. You gotta leave behind. If it's your desire to have a closer relationship to God, you will do whatever He says. You go wherever He leads you. You do whatever it takes. And when you find a child of God who knows the Word of God and can teach you the to follow the lead of God so you are closer to the presence of God. Then you don't mind following them. Then you don't mind walking with them. Then you don't mind agreeing with them. Oh, that's what grew foul in Mother Naomi. Naomi was someone who could teach her the way of the Lord. But Naomi didn't quite get it at first, she said, look how your sister-in-law has returned back to her people and back to her God. Follow your sister-in-law. But Ruth said, don't make me go back. There's a reason God brought us together. But both of these women had lost everything. They are both still in mourning. But sometimes you just gotta stop lamenting your loss. Sometimes you just gotta stop feeling sorry for yourself. Open up your eyes and look and see what you have gained. Open up your eyes and start to show forth some gratitude. Never mind what you lost. Be thankful for what you gave. Never mind what you had no more of. Be thankful because every good and perfect gift comes from God. Be thankful. Be grateful. Be joyful. Be filled with the Spirit. Be willing to serve God from whom all blessings flow. Oh, Mother Naomi gained a friend indeed. Ruth gained a sweet spirit to be her leader, a sweet spirit to bring her to her Lord. Thanks be to God for the sweet communion of the Holy Spirit. Thanks be to God that we have found a friend in Jesus. There is no greater love that a man be willing to lay down his life for his friends. What a friend we have in Jesus. All our sins and griefs to bear. What a friend we have in Jesus who gave his life that we might have life, that we might have it more abundantly. He says, if we keep his commandments, we are his friends. He commands us to put our hands to the plow. No turning back. So Ruth said, don't make me go back. She said, where you go, I will go. And I'm going to be with you all the way. She said, just like the old folks used to sing a song. When he leaves me, I will follow. I go with him through the garden. I go with him through the judgment. He'll give me grace and glory, and I'll go with him all the way. You see, when you go with God, God will go with you. When you walk with Jesus, Jesus will walk with you. When you follow the Holy Ghost, the Holy Ghost will follow you. So don't fret what's in your past. Don't fret what you had to 
leave behind. Don't fret what's in your future. Goodness and mercy shall follow you all the days of your life. Goodness and mercy shall lead you home. Goodness and mercy shall always be with you. Ruth said, don't make me go back. Will you go? I'll go. Will you stay? I'll stay. She said, I'm staying with the one, the Lord, who sent me. She said, I'm staying in the hands of my Savior. I'm staying in the hands of my God. I'm going to stay in the arms of my Jesus. Stay on my knees. I'm staying in prayer. I'm staying true to the faith that I shall not be moved. She said, your people shall be my people. She said, my people are the chosen people of God. My people are the ones who praise his name. My people walk by faith and not by sight. Your God is my God, and my God is awesome. My God, he can move mountains. He can keep me in the valley. Hide me from the rain. My God heals me when I'm broken. Gives me strength where I've been weakened. Forever, my God will wait. He'll be with us in life. He'll be with us in death. Nothing can separate me from you because nothing can separate us from the love of our God, the faith of our mother. Put your hands together, amen? Put your hands
eternity. We thank you, God, for the faith to move when it's time to move. We thank you, God, for the faith to stay when it's time to stay. And we thank you, Lord, for the faith that encourages us to go back home when it's time to go back home. We thank you, God, for every mother, for every child who brought another child into this world. We thank you, God, for every mother who raised her children in the way that they should go and taught them that even if they should depart, they can always find their way back home. We thank you, God, that we always have a place in our mother's hearts. In Jesus' name, amen. And now our prayer of salvation. I believe in Jesus Christ. I believe in Jesus Christ. The only begotten Son of God. Who was crucified on Calvary's cross. To save a wretch like me. Lord, forgive me for all my sins. Wash me in the blood of the precious Lamb of God. I renounce Satan and all his wicked ways. I believe in my heart and I confess with my mouth that Jesus Christ is Lord. Lord, come into my heart. Make my heart know from this day on and forevermore. I am saved. I am loved. And I am free. Glory, hallelujah, to God and hand up the praise. Glory, hallelujah, praise God from the Lord.
Amen. We thank God for everybody in the sanctuary, everybody who here that already knows how to give and who has already given. So at this time, we shall pray to give God thanks as we consecrate this offering, and we shall pray our benediction that we might be dismissed from this place, but never from the presence of God. Gracious God, we acknowledge that all things come of thee, O Lord, and of thine own have we given thee. We acknowledge that every good and perfect gift comes from you. So God, now we are only giving you back some of what you have already provided unto us. Bless us, God, in Jesus' name, because we recognize we cannot be you given, no matter how hard we try. Finally, brothers and sisters, whatsoever things are good, whatsoever things are pure, whatsoever things are holy, whatsoever things are good report, if there be any praise, if there be any virtue, think on these things, and the peace of God, which surpasses all understanding, shall keep your hearts and minds till we shall meet Jesus, baby, to baby.